Hello kids! How are you today? I am Teacher Risa and welcome to our science class. Are you ready? Let's go! Listen carefully and join me in exploring light and shadow. For today's learning objective, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to Number one, describe how shadows are formed. Number two, describe the changes in position and length of shadows in the surroundings as the position of the sun changes. Before we go on, let's have a short review. Identify what is being described by arranging the letters. Number one, it is a form of energy made of photons. A photon is the smallest unit of visible light. Light. Very good. Number two. It is the main source of heat and light on Earth. Sun. Correct. Number three. Light travels in a... Straight line. Very good. Number four. It is when light bounces off an object. Reflection. Very good. Number five. It is the bending of light as it travels from one type of material to another. Refraction Very good class! You mastered our previous lesson. Now, let's move on. Let us watch a short story light and shadows then answer the questions that follow light and shadows this is andy say hello to him andy is nine year old he loves science just like you one morning Andy misses the school bus and has to walk to school. On the way to school, he realizes that his shadow is very long. It is even taller than him. Maybe hopping will make my shadow even longer. So Andy starts hopping to school. During his recess, Andy notices his shadow is shorter than in the morning. It is about the same height as him now. On his way home from school, Andy looked very carefully at his shadow. His shadow has become really, really short. Andy begins to worry. Oh no! Oh no! My shadow is growing smaller and smaller under the sun. It is going to disappear. Andy is really very worried. Andy couldn't wait for his daddy to come home. Andy ran out of the house to find his daddy. To his surprise, 
and they see that his shadow hasn't disappeared. It is as tall as the shadow in the morning. Andy is glad that his shadow did not disappear. The sky gets darker as Andy walks home with his daddy. Andy notices that his shadow becomes lighter as the sky gets darker. Andy is puzzled by what he sees. Just as he is wondering, the street lamps light up. And he sees three of his own shadows. Oh no! Does that mean that there are three of me right now? That night, Andy cannot fall asleep. Andy cannot help to think about his shadows. How is shadow formed? What causes the size and position of the shadow to change? What is the relationship between the length and position of the shadow? and the time of the day. Based on the position of my shadow, how can I tell where is the light source? Can you help Andy to find the answers? Andy is very curious about his shadows. Can you help him answer all his questions? That's great! But before that, let's see if you understand the story by answering the following questions. Who is the character in the story? It is Andy. What did Andy notice about his shadow on his way to school? Andy notices that his shadow is very long. At what time did Andy notice that his shadow was very short? At 12 noon. Why does Andy feel worried? Andy is worried because he thought his shadow will disappear. What did Andy found out when he went outside at 5.30 p.m.? Andy found out that his shadow did not disappear and it is as tall as the shadow in the morning. Well done, kids! Now, we are ready to help Andy to answer all his questions. For Andy's first question, How is shadow formed? Light is a form of energy made of photons. A photon is the smallest unit of visible light. Light travels in a straight line. When the light reaches an object, it reacts differently depending on the kind of matter it comes into contact with. These objects can be transparent, translucent, or opaque. Let us watch this video. Objects are classified as transparent, translucent, or opaque depending upon their treatment of light. Objects that allow light to pass through them are called transparent objects. Most of the light falling upon a transparent object passes through it to the other side, thereby allowing us to see through them. Glass, clean air, pure water, etc. are examples of transparent objects. Objects that do not allow any light to pass through them are called opaque objects. As a result, we cannot see through them. When light falls on an opaque object, its shadow is formed on the other side of it. Wood, sheets of metal, 
dark colored plastics, rocks, etc. are examples of opaque objects. Objects that are partially transparent and partially opaque are called translucent objects. They allow light to pass through them in a scattered or diffused manner. Frosted glass, tracing paper, greased paper, etc. are examples of translucent objects. To form a shadow, there should be a source of light. It can be a natural light, like the sun, or an artificial light, like flashlight, bulb, and candles. And an opaque object, like trees, houses, toys, and even us. Remember, shadow is formed when straight light rays are blocked by an opaque objects. For Alice question number two, three, and four, let us have an experiment. Experiment time! Because of the pandemic, it is not safe to go out. So, let us do our activity inside the house. We are going to improvise. Before we start, here are some simple reminders. Number one, listen carefully to the teacher. Number two, follow the directions. Number three, be observant. Number four, take down notes the important details. Number five, ask the help of your family members. To answer Andy's question number two, what causes the size and position of the shadow to change? Let's do activity one. What do we need? Flashlight. Any assorted objects with different sizes and shapes that can be found in your house like pencil, cup, orange toy, Rubik's Cube, a rubber ducky, and a wooden block. The flashlight is our source of light. Let us place the objects one by one in front of our source of light. Observe their shadows. As we observe, the shadows have different sizes and shapes. It depends upon the object that casts the shadow. The bigger object makes bigger shadows. The smaller object makes smaller shadows. Can we change the size of the shadow? Let us move the object closer to the light source.
As we move the object closer to the light source, the shadow becomes bigger and bigger. Now, let's move the object away from the light source. The shadow becomes smaller and smaller. Now, try to move the source of the light in any direction. Observe the position of the light source and the position of the shadow. You can see the direction of the shadow is opposite to the source of light. The source of light is going to act on the object. The object is blocking the light and giving a shadow on the other side. So this is clear that the direction of the shadow is always opposite to the source of light. Based on our activity number one, the answer to Andy's question number two is the size and position of a shadow change according to the position of the light source. For Andy's question number three, what is the relationship between the length and position of the shadow and the time of the day? Let's do activity two. In this activity, we are going to see the change in size and direction of shadow. For this, we need a plain paper. Draw four lines showing the direction east, west, north, and south. And mark these points with equal distance into the center point. 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m. We are going to see at different times of the day how the shadow is going to change. Choose one object and put it at the center. Then choose a light source that will act as the sun. It can be a flashlight from a mobile phone. Turn off the light of the room to see the shadow clearly. Then let's start. The sun rises in the east and sets on the west. When early morning, the sun rises in the east. You can see the direction of the shadow is just opposite to the light source. The object blocks the light and casts a shadow on the other side. The direction of the shadow is always opposite to the source of light. The sun is going to start moving and as it reaches around 8 a.m., mark the length of the shadow. You can ask the help of your family members. And when it reaches 10 a.m., mark the length of the shadow. At 12 noon, the sun is directly overhead. Mark the shadow. And it reaches... 2 p.m. Mark again the shadows. Sorry.
Mark again the shadows at 2 p.m. And then at 4 p.m., mark the shadow, the length of the shadow. And finally, the sun sets in the west. Turn on the light. Now we can see which has the longest shadow. It shows that the longest shadow is early morning around 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. and the shortest shadow is at 12 noon which is the sun is exactly overhead. Based on our activity, we can see the relationship between the length and position of the shadow and the time of the day. Sun, as the source of light, is constantly moving across the sky as it rises in the east and sets in the west. The sunlight strikes at the objects in different angles and affects the length and position of the shadows. In early morning, the sun is in the east side, the shadow cast on the west side. The sun's light rays are slanted as they hit the ground, so longer shadows are formed. At noon, when the sun is high or nearly above the horizon, shorter shadows are formed. In early evening, the sun is in the west side, the shadow cast on the east side. The sun's light rays are also slanted as they hit the ground, so longer shadows are formed. For Andy's last question, based on the position of my shadow, how can I tell where is the light source? As we observe in our two activities, the direction of the shadow is always opposite to the source of light. Trivia time! You can have multiple shadows. It all depends on the number of light sources. The more the number of lights, the more shadows you will have. Great job! We answered all Andy's questions. Now, answer the following exercises to see if you understand our lesson for today. Exercise 1. Read the situation. You and your friends plan to have your lunch in a big tree at your school ground. You are the one assigned in putting up the mat. On what side of the tree will you place the mat? A, B, or C? Letter C. Exercise 2. Identify what will be the position of the shadow on the picture based on the position of the sun. Click the picture of the correct answer. Number 1. What will be the position of the shadow? A, B, or C? Letter B. Number 2. What will be the position of the shadow? A, B, or C? C Number 3 What will be the position of the shadow? A B or C Letter 
letter A. Number 4. What will be the position of the shadow? A, B, or C? Letter A. Number 5. What will be the position of the shadow? A, B, or C? Letter C. Very good class. Let us have a recap. Shadow is formed when straight light rays are blocked by an opaque object. The sunlight strikes at the objects in different angles and affects the length and position of the shadows. For our evaluation, write through on the blank if the statement is correct and false if not, you have two minutes to answer this. Your timer starts now. Now, you can check your answers. For your additional activity, you can play with your shadow. What to do? Number one, close the windows and door of your room. Number two, bring your fingers near the wall. Number three, Ask someone to switch the flashlight on your fingers, forming some shapes like the head of the dog. This is the end of our lesson. Thank you so much. Goodbye class! <laughs>